Okay. Okay, good morning. My name is Matt Roberts. And I am Karen Johnson, and we are career experience consultants for Chesterfield County Public Schools. We are very excited to be with you today to have a discussion about what we feel is a workforce development initiative. Before we get started today, we would like to thank all of you for your time and interest in the work-based learning initiative. We would also like to thank Justin for his time and efforts in arranging our participation in today's meeting. And we would like to express our sincere appreciation for the long-standing relationship and cooperation between Chesterfield County uh, Chamber, Chesterfield Chamber and Champs in their support of Chesterfield County Public Schools and our work-based learning initiative. Today, we have two introduction activities we'd like to begin with, a brief but informative slide presentation, a general Q&A period, and a few broad statements and questions we'd like to leave you with to consider going forward. So before we get started, we wanted to have some fun with you guys. Um, we had asked you to send some high school pictures. We were also going to include ours. Uh, unfortunately, we found out later that we were not uh, able to share ours with you. But some of you did share your pictures uh, with us, and we do appreciate that. So um, not to embarrass any of you that did, um, but those that are on the slide, as you can see on the slide, there are several high school students represented. Let's see how good you are. And by the way, this is a contest. How many people can you guess correctly from their high school picture that's also with us today? And you can put your answers in the chat and the person with the most correct answers wins a prize. Oh, uh, sorry, we're all out of prizes. <laughs> Just kidding. Ashley, are we getting any responses over there? All right, so we have um, Danielle said Amy and Justin. Leon said Justin and Amy. Oh, it's moving quick. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it says. I'm getting everybody. Justin, Tom. Amy's pretty easy to pay. Amy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Amy's in all of them. Yes. <laughs> Tom, Justin, Amy. Right. Who, who got all three right? Tom, Justin, Amy was Ann. Let's see. Way to go, Ann. Yes. That's the only Thank one you. that has all of them. Yes, good well, job. I'm sorry I missed right. that email. I would have sent you one of mine and, and we all would have had a phenomenal chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's definitely uh, a fun to look back in your high school, uh, your high school days. Yeah, I gotta know though, Amy, what are you holding? I was in the band and it was the plume to my hat. I was in the marching band in high school at Hermitage. Got and it. we were on on the bus. We were actually on the school bus going to one of the games, and that's the plume to my hat, and that's the hat in my lap. Love it. Very cool. So uh, with our high school pictures up on the screen as a way for us to go down memory lane, uh, what I'd like each of you to look back at your high school days and even into your college years. Think about the work experiences you were involved in, where you saw yourself going in life, your career interest and paths you pursued then versus now. So in our introductions, would you please introduce yourself again and during your introduction, answer these two questions. Are you where you saw yourself back then today? If you're in a different place, what events took place to change the result of where you are today? And I'm happy to start off uh, as an example. Again, my name is Matt Roberts. My high school years had me going in a completely different direction than where I am now. In high school, I saw myself going into a completely different career field. But because of work-based learning opportunity, I went down a new career path. And today, I'm a teacher focusing on providing work-based learning experiences for young adults. So uh, with that example, if a couple of you wouldn't mind sharing um, and uh, leading off the introductions, if you don't feel like sharing or don't feel comfortable sharing, that's fine too. Uh, but I, I think it would put it in a nice perspective for us going forward when we start talking about work-based learning. So who would like to start? I'll jump in. So uh, I graduated high school in 86 in Germantown, Tennessee. Uh, my path at the time I graduated was to uh, go to law school. 
Um, the LSAT had very different ideas for that path. Hmm. And um, as a result, I think I've really found my passion in training, coaching, and, and helping people work to find their why or find a path itself. Thank you. Great. Who, who would like to go next? I'll go next. Um, this is Ann Coker. Uh, when I graduated high school, um, my path was taking me down a um, like pediatric uh, medical field. And what changed for me was an internship that I worked during my summer breaks. And it switched me from um, the medical field to the business world. And I ended up in accounting. So pretty big switch, but it was an internship that I had over the summer and during my, my college breaks that, that switched my career path. Great, thank you. Thank you. And anyone else? Ahead. This is uh, Kim Brown from Junior Achievement. So when I was in high school, I really wanted to be a children's author. Um, I went to creative writing camp and <laughs> I really wanted to write children's books. And I grew up in Western Massachusetts, which is where um, Mo Willems, the children's author is from. He writes books like Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, um, which, is a, which is a childhood favorite. <laughs> and um, I went to one of his talks and he, he talked about how it took him a while and went through different careers to kind of get to a place where he could be a full-time author. So that really put things in perspective for me and um, pivoted to still include writing and things that I like, but I ended up um, majoring in English, becoming an English teacher and now finding a passion for the education field. So um, having that experience of getting to really hear from a professional was really impactful for me. Excellent. Anybody else? Yeah, this is Danielle. Um, so similar to Leon, I thought maybe I was going to be a lawyer, uh, but quickly changed as I was coming out of school and was thinking, gosh, I got to stay in school for a really long time. And I thought I was going to go the teacher route at one point. Um, and then uh, once I ultimately ended up in college, I uh, took the business route. But uh, for years, you know, in my house, it was, you're gonna be a teacher, lawyer, doctor, pick one of those <laughs> professions and uh, ultimately was a business major. Very, very good. Uh, time for one more. I, I guess I'll share. Um, so when I graduated, that was a low, that was me. This is Tom uh, Katosic. That definitely was a picture of me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with my excellent sideburns and very uh, uh, interesting hairdo there. Um, I, uh, I thought I was going to uh, drop out of society and follow around a band across the country. That was my goal. Um, I had real no ambition or aspirations of any sort of professional endeavors whatsoever. And I would say um, I graduated from Midlothian High School in 2001. Uh, right around, uh, right after, uh, right after, uh, right before September 11th. So like before everything kind of changed and all that. Um, and I would say that uh, I, the biggest thing that kind of changed my career was having an influence in my family. My father, uh, after I graduated, he basically, I hadn't, I hadn't applied for any colleges or anything. And he grabbed my arm and took me down to John Tyler and uh, signed me up for class. He took a day off of work and dragged me to John Tyler and signed me up for classes. And uh, from there, from there, I just kind of developed a, a, a passion for, for helping people and uh, and was able to find my way into banking and found my way into the credit union and found my way. So like, I didn't really have a set path or, um, and in all honesty, I still really don't. I found my way into a, a job that I, that I enjoy, that I'm passionate about and continuing to reinvest in my education. And, um, but it, I think it's still unknown for, for me in terms of what I really want to do when I grow up and I'm almost 40. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for sharing. Um, we've heard many similar comments from adults that have, you know, graduated and moved on that they wish they knew maybe some of what they know now, or they wish they had that opportunity when they were in school. Um, so through this work-based learning initiative, CCPS is trying to create more stories that students are saying, I'm so glad this was presented 
to me while I'm in uh, my secondary years in school or this work-based learning opportunity helped me realize what I really wanted to do for a career. And we want employers to say, finally, a consistent flow of potential qualified candidates um, that will produce long-term uh, assets to my business. So we're so glad this workforce initiative uh, was shared with us and we're excited to get started. So let's talk about work-based learning. Welcome to the CCPS Work-Based Learning Initiative Overview. This is a statewide initiative and also a national U.S. Department of Education Encourage movement based on a lot of research, studies, and discussion. At this time, this initiative may not be prominent in all school districts across the state. However, it will be coming to the forefront in all of Virginia school districts very soon. We encourage you to reach out to your friends, family, associates, and business partners about the work-based learning program. Today, we would like to share with you what Chesterfield County Public Schools is doing with the work-based learning initiative. And in our presentation, we'll discuss how this could be considered a workforce development initiative. What is work-based learning? Why work-based learning? The types of work-based learning uh, we will be offering in Chesterfield County, the goals that we have for our work-based learning, and for your reference on this slide is the student enrollment numbers in Chesterfield compared to the regional openings in the 16 career clusters under Virginia Department of Education. So raise your hand if you have any high school children or children ready to enter high school. And I'm gonna ask Ashley or somebody if they could, cause I can't see everybody's hand, if they could point somebody out for me. Anybody? Yeah, I do. Danielle's, I got, do. Danielle's I do. got a thumbs up. Okay. Um, and what grade are they going into? So I have a current junior and a current eighth grader. So, you know, we've done both schedules for freshman and senior year. Okay. All right. And uh, what is, uh, is it your son or your daughter or both? Both boys. Okay. And what's one of their names? Uh, Alex. Alex, okay. So to be ready for graduation, Alex would need, and this is uh, Dr. Lane's superintendent memo. Um, my apologies, my screen just jumped on me. Okay. Um, so this is showing what uh, Alex would need to do. He would either need to um, complete an advanced placement honors or international backward or dual enrollment course. He would need to complete a high quality work-based learning experience, which is what we're speaking of today, or actually earn a career in technical education or a credential in technical education in order to, to graduate. So it has definitely been uh, brought to the forefront. And, um, and additionally, Chesterfield County Public Schools is supporting this through metrics 1.3 by having graduating students who are college and career ready to engage as productive citizens. So by 2025, CCPS students will exceed expectations for performance on the Virginia Department of Education's College Career and Civic Readiness Index uh, that Mike referenced earlier. Work-based learning supports a student's career awareness, exploration, and preparation in a select business sector that aligns with their student's academic and career plan. So the importance of WBL experiences as indicated by the Virginia Department of Education predominantly places WBL in the profile of a Virginia graduate. So as you can see, this is how a WBL fits into the entirety of the CCCRI. Um, and we want you to note that service learning is actually within WBL as defined by the Virginia Department of Education. So um, what is work-based learning? Uh, a lot of people have preconceived notions about how it used to be, you know, you would go to one of the technical centers and then you would go out to work. And uh, so what we're very proud of with the work-based learning initiative is how it's been put together and organized. It is a continuum, it's ongoing, of school coordinated workplace experiences that are related to students' career goals and or their interests. And again, it's ongoing. So they are performed in partnership with local businesses, industries, and other organizations in the community. Work-based learning enables students to apply classroom instruction into a real-world business or service-oriented work environment. 
And Chesterfield County has a continuum of WBL experiences and they range from low to high intensity. And when we say intensity, it really means the amount of time and effort and energy all the stakeholders have to put in to make that experience happen. So today we're gonna to take a brief look at each experience through the eyes of two students, Jamar and Monica. So I want to explain the difference between awareness, exploration, and preparation. Awareness is in the younger grades, so think uh, K through five, maybe even in uh, grade six, where they're just getting exposure to the different career paths. Um, exploration is where they really dive into those career paths and start finding out more in, in detailed information and start having some of these experiences. And preparation is where we're preparing our students to get out there into the world of work. So let's look at Jamar. And I'm gonna start with career fair. Uh, Jamar, let's, uh, this is a, a make-believe student, but I want you to imagine him as an active child in elementary school. He plays in a variety of sports through association ball. In the fifth grade, he attended a career fair where professionals share their knowledge and expertise with students. So in this particular career fair, Jamar heard from J.C. Poma, Director of Sports Relations for Richmond Region Tourism, and he learned about how sports tourist Tourism is a huge industry that can help an area economy. And he was really intrigued because he only thought about how he loved to play ball, not how sports kind of affected the economy. As Jamar grew and got older, he continued to develop his love of playing soccer. In school, he took a career investigations course in seventh grade and found a deeper understanding of the hospitality and tourism industry, as well as marketing. And he looked at those career opportunities through the lens of a sports lover. So he decided to call the Richmond Kickers organization and ask for an informational interview with Will Selden, the ticket sales manager. He was fascinated with the strategies that they used to fill the seats at City Stadium. And then in eighth grade, Jamar decided he wanted to learn more about marketing. So he took an introduction to marketing course his freshman year, and part of his course was to complete a job shadow. Uh, so with his instructor's support, he was able to spend the whole day at River City Sports Complex learning about how that company attracts area events. As he continued to grow, Jamar continued his coursework in sports marketing, and during his sophomore year, he was able to do an externship, which is an extended job shadow, and his experience was with John Watt from the Chesterfield Economic Development in Chesterfield County, and got to spend 40 hours paired with this professional, learning more about his workplace and his career. And finally, Jamar in his senior year, uh, through a mentorship, which is two 30-minute connections per month, uh, he worked closely with Alan Carr, the director of marketing sales at, at the Richmond Kickers, and she worked as a mentor to Jamar to help him on his journey to be prepared uh, for a career in sports marketing. Okay, next we have a, uh, another student. Her name is Monica. And she started uh, into middle school and not really knowing what she wanted to do. She also went to a career fair. And at the career fair, she saw many different business opportunities or many different career opportunities. And this one woman really stood out to her. Uh, she was dressed the way that she envisioned herself being dressed. She was very friendly and outgoing. And she was in the beauty industry. And so... Monica was very, very interested in speaking with this, uh, this woman. And so when she did, she asked the woman if it would be possible for her to come into her classroom as a guest speaker. And so the woman agreed. And as a guest speaker, there are normally 30 to uh, 90 minute segments where a guest speaker comes in and talks to the class. And so when she did, Monica was just ecstatic. She was like, yes, I really enjoyed uh, listening to what this woman does and everything about the industry. So she then decided that she wanted to ask her teacher, could they do a workplace tour? And so the class went on a workplace tour uh, where the woman's uh, business was. And so Monica went to the workplace and she was able to see what everybody was doing, all the different jobs there. And she just really got a good feeling for that and decided, I think I want to do this. I really do. So from the workplace tour experience, 
Uh, she ended up going to the tech center when she got into uh, 11th grade. And she decided that she wanted to apply to one of the tech center programs. And so she applied to the nail technician program. While she was in the nail technician program, she was able to experience many different opportunities on the, the work-based learning continuum, one of which is the school-based enterprise. In the school-based enterprise, in this program, the students actually open a business uh, about midway through the year. They actually run the business as if it was their own. They have to handle the money. They have to book the appointments. They have to, they have all different job duties as well as their skill that they work and learn in class. So some of them might be a receptionist. Some of them might be the manager of the salon. So they get the opportunity to actually function in the school-based enterprise as if they were working in this business. So Monica did that and she was the receptionist and she just, that just confirmed that this is definitely what she wanted to do. The other opportunity that those students had in that same program is they had a separate course within that course on entrepreneurship. So Monica decided that she wanted to find out what it would be like to own her own business. So she was given uh, the groundwork for what was required to open her own business. She had to name her business. She had to come up with a budget to open the business. And then she had to run her business. And that is also done throughout the entire course of the year. So when Monica did that, she was really excited. She knew that she needed to start out as a licensed or as a certified nail technician, but she also realized that when she did get out there, she was going to need to get some experience under her belt before she actually went into business for herself because of the entrepreneurship program that she experienced. The other thing that Monica was able to do in her second year is that she was able to do, go into an internship in one of the salons that would be either on the advisory council for the program or that were one of the business partners working with the work-based learning program. So she decided to go to work in a salon that was one of the partners and do a short internship. The short internships are normally anywhere from 50 to 159 hours, and it gives Monica the opportunity to really observe in that business and see all of the different situations going on and to participate in a guided training plan where she can um, work alongside with one of the technicians and she can actually really get a feel for that field or, or for that career. The other experience that Monica could have taken advantage of but decided not to was the cooperative education on the continuum. That's a much stricter and a much longer part of the uh, continuum or the high intensity experiences is what they're called. That normally consists of 280 hours and also can earn that student one more credit towards uh, their credits for graduation. And that was the, the career path that Monica chose, but she also did complete the course and did get her uh, license and her certification to be a state licensed nail technician. So that was Monica's pathway. And what I want all of you to recognize as you go through the continuum that we have up on the screen is that we have low intensity experiences, which is what you see in blue at the beginning of the continuum. These are all experiences that are for students to learn and to experience what they might wanna do. Is this something that I wanna find out a little bit more because I'm interested in it. And as they learn that, they might decide it at one point of that early part of the road. No, that's not for me. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into this over here and check that out. So it gives them a more guided and a more informative way for them to actually decide what they do want to do. So that when they get to the later part of the continuum, they actually are going to get into the higher intensity experiences where they are going to get that real experience, develop that real desire, that real passion to actually do that career path and to actually get the, the basis for that career and, and to be more successful in that career because they have learned that it is their passion. So we did skip over some as we were going through the continuum with our two students, and that's because they actually are uh, an actual another pathway that they could take. So we're going to go back and we're going to explain those for you. Mm -hmm. So we did not talk about the um, the clinical experience. We could start there, Matt. You want me to okay. jump in? 
Yeah, uh, clinical uh, experience is only for our health and medical students, and it gives them an opportunity to practice their clinical experience, apply their, their classroom learning in a real clinical environment. So students are placed in a variety of healthcare settings like Brandon Woods Retirement Community or Lucy Core, and they observe patients at different stages to better understand the scope of the healthcare profession. And we also have Youth Registered Apprentice, which is one of the highest intensity experiences. Um, there's no um, minimum to integrating this related career and in technical education instruction and their on the job training. So it starts in high school with these partnerships as a youth registered apprentice, but they can also obviously continue that path and that partnership uh, with an area employer after they graduate. Um, so youth registered apprentice help these students gain employability and occupational skills. Um, the instructors of our courses uh, are qualified teachers and journey worker experts, and they are the liaisons and the guides to these students as they're working with area business and industry. And in this particular experience, students can earn one elective credit when they work uh, over 280 hours. And then also one of the experiences that was just added back in that we that would have been earlier in the road as well is the supervi supervised agricultural experience. That was removed because of safety issues before, and they've now added it back in because they have, uh, they've addressed the safety issues. But as you all well know too, agriculture is something that is uh, needed very uh, much in today's society. And so these students are uh, paired with uh, a, a, an experienced person that is going to spend about 40 hours with them to give them that experience of the agricultural experience. But they will be supervised during that entire experience and they will be uh, make sure that the safety protocols are followed. Yeah. So on this next slide, we're gonna talk about the goals for CCPS. Um, I want to let everyone know what a concentrator is or a completer. Um, those terms have kind of been used uh, interchangeably in the past, but we, we call it a concentrator. Um, and it means that a student has gone through at least two years of a related uh, industry or career path through their education. So once they complete that second year, they're defined as a concentrator. And so for year one, Chesterfield County has defined the following WBL implementation goals. Uh, during the 2020-21 school year, uh, the goals are as bottles. With low intensity experiences, each teacher should have one experience for one section of uh, the classes that they teach. So for example, if you have a guest speaker come in and speak to one of uh, the courses, then the teacher in Chesterfield County has accomplished that goal for a low intensity experience for this year. Uh, with the high intensity experiences, the teachers must have one experience for 10% of their concentrators. Um, so if, for example, if you have 50 concentrators, then they, the teachers would encourage at least five uh, students to participate in a high WBL experience. And this is a continuum of goals. So we are going to continually roll this out. This is the first year we're doing it. So as, um, as we experience uh, the challenges and the benefits to this program, you're going to see more and more and more students participate in these types of work-based learning opportunities. Um, all low intensity experiences are reportable to CCPS, while the high intensity experiences we report to B BDOE, um, and in subsequent years, the, the performance goals will increase. So by 2025, all CCPS students will exceed expectations for performance on the BDOE College Career and Civic Readiness Index. And Chesterfield County Public Schools has embraced this work-based learning initiative with excitement on targeted goals beyond those set by Virginia Department of Education with the development of this dedicated team of consultants to support the rollout and the growth going forward. We are actively seeking partnerships uh, with all aspects of industry to support this exceptional opportunity for businesses and students. Um, so this slide includes our contact information for our team of career experience consultants led by Mr. Mike Watkins. And uh, what I would also like to say to you guys before, um, before we finish the, the presentation, I've, I've worked in many different uh, school districts across the region or been exposed to many of them. And the main thing that brought me to Chesterfield was just exactly how serious and how well thought out 
Chesterfield County is when it comes to education. And I'm really excited about the work-based learning initiative that they have really spent the time on putting together. And uh, I think with the partnership with the businesses that, uh, you know, that the chamber has, that we have established, that the, the school system itself has already established over many years. Um, I'm really excited about what's gonna be the result when it comes to the student population and when it comes to the businesses of Chesterfield County. But finally, I would like to leave you with a few broad questions to put in your mind as you think about how you may be able to support the work-based learning initiative. How do you see the future for your children and the young adults of Virginia? Do you want them to look back and say, I wish I had that opportunity when I was in school? What can you do to make work-based learning the answer to today and tomorrow's workforce needs and the vision in young minds clearer about which career path is their passion. Again, we encourage you to share this initiative with your colleagues, friends, family, business partners, anyone you feel may benefit from or contribute to the work-based learning program. We will be more than happy to meet with each of you, your partners, anyone you feel would be helpful in creating relationships that will support a sustainable, competent, qualified, and focused workforce for many years to come. We believe, just like the song says, I believe that children are our future and together we can make that future brighter than today. It has been a pleasure meeting with each of you and we thank you enough so much for your time today. This concludes our presentation and now we'd like to answer any questions you may have and also open the floor to discussion. Well, thank you, Karen and Matt. Did anybody have any questions this morning they want to address? They can type it into the chat or they can go ahead and just speak up. I didn't have uh, any questions, but, but first just want to say thank you very much for the presentation. Um, and just to mention that one thing that I find um, very encouraging is that we're introducing this information, these career clusters in the middle school, you know, eighth grade, or actually as early as sixth grade. But um, I know my son, is, who is a rising ninth grader, he just recently had to pick his career path. And um, we actually sat down last night and, and talked about it. So it's opening up that conversation to be happening um, before they reach high school, which is just good to at least have that thought process started. So um, I, I think that's very encouraging for our students. What, what career path is he thinking about, Ann? That's, that's awesome. Um, he is uh, thinking about the um, food and uh, nutrition path. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of a mix. He, he also is interested in the Coast Guard. So. Okay. He is going to be starting with uh, the JROTC program um, okay. because his original, his thought right now is to join the Coast Guard when he gets out of high school, but his um, ultimate career plan is in food and nutrition. I love it. Yeah. Fantastic. So I, I got to have a question and a comment. Um, I have plenty of myself as well as my father-in-law to offer resources to whatever school might help them make, make some sense. Um, I have a special place in my heart for Clover Hill, so certainly happy to offer there. My daughter's at Cosby, so she would probably prefer me to stay away. Um, <laughs> and uh, my father-in-law also has a PhD in agricultural economics and lives in Brander Mills, so I know he is very interested in um, education. He does a ton of stuff at um, at Swift Creek Middle, so he's already involved in the schools. Uh, has any research come through, and I realize that this is a new program, I would be slightly concerned that some of these kids might feel like they're pigeonholing themselves rather than that freedom to shift gears when you get to college and realize when you get away from your parents and their influences to spread their own wings, so to speak. Any thoughts? Uh, there. So our, our director has been very clear that they 
This initiative especially has multiple entry and exit points just for that fact, like you stated, Mr. Brownlee, that children especially are going to change their mind and that's normal and that's natural. So we want students to have opportunities and exposure so that they know that there's different options out there and not just exposure and content and what they're learning in the classroom, but exposure in the real world to get a real a clear picture of what it would be like in that industry. And at any point, if they want to hop off that pathway and join another, then we as a, a team need to make that easy for them to show them how they can move through those different experiences. Um, so I do understand um, what you're saying, like what if they're on this track, do they have to stay on it the whole four years? So the answer is no. Um, they're able to jump in and out of those experiences in those um, different courses as they see fit so the other, the other thing Leon that's really good about the question that you asked is by doing this at this early age where they they're encouraged or they're, they're kind of forced to focus on okay what do I want to do and make that decision they learn and they practice okay I thought about that I explored it I decided that's not what I want to do and so by, by doing that practice, they don't get stuck in something for years that they then decide they don't want to do and they're regretful of. But the other thing that has happened, and it's going to take it a step further, is that now when they get into colleges, colleges are now going to be responsible for studying the students that enter and exit when it comes to their major and did they go into that career field or not. So this will give that student that practice to, you know, to know that they can change their direction, but they've got to make that decision before they spend too much time in that particular pathway. Yeah. So if there's a student that is uh, taking a class and they decide they don't like where that's going, they're able to hop out mid-semester or do they have to wait and complete that, that semester or year? That's a great point. So with scheduling and, and the schools, it, it is hard mid-semester to be able to exit a course, um, especially if it is a year-long course. But many of those um, middle school experiences with career investigations can be uh, in sixth grade. It can be uh, through an exploratory course where it's only mm -hmm. in nine weeks where they're starting to explore those different career paths. So it just depends on um, the track. But mm -hmm. If a student, like let's say that student Jamar was in the intro to marketing course his freshman year, if he decided at that point marketing wasn't for him and he wanted to go into hospitality and tourism instead, his 10th grade year, he doesn't have to take marketing again. You're not locked into studying that all four years. So, um, so there is a way to, to move into a different direction after the course is complete. Now, how does this affect students that transfer into Chesterfield schools? Let's say they transfer from Ohio and they're now here. Uh, do they have like a catch up session or is there something different that acclimates them to this program? So hopefully because this is a statewide initiative, we are hoping that if they're in state, you know, they've explored some career options at their, you know, another school, wherever they came from. If they're coming from out of state, I think it would be just like anything that that we do in Chesterfield, we meet them where they are. And so if they haven't had those opportunities in their in a previous district, um, you know, they'll get some exposure as soon as they get here. I don't know, uh, that is a requirement for graduation that if you're a Chesterfield County Public School student that you are um, participating in this type of career exploration. So through one way or another, they're gonna make sure the students have that exposure. And, and the other thing about the way this is uh, organized is that they will be orientated by their teacher. And so regardless of, of when they come into the program within that school year, uh, they will find out what the different experiences are. And this is student driven too. So the students are going to be driving the experiences that they actually um, pursue. And so, but yes, they will, the teacher will go over the work-based learning with them, however they come into the program, whether it's mid-year or whenever it may be. Great, thank you. I have a quick question. Quick question. Um, yeah, one last oh, one last never. question here for the, no, go ahead. One last question here for the sake of time because it is almost 9.30. Um, I know some other people do need to hop off. So go ahead, If you, did you have a question, uh, 
Catherine? Yeah, I just had a question. Do any of the programs offer like college credits? Like, because I know um, I graduated in 2010 from High Tech Academy in Henrico, and that was a lifesaver for me. I thought I was going to go into engineering, didn't. But then when I got to college, even though I had to switch majors and it was a hassle and probably would have cost me a lot of money, I had college credits under my belt to, you know, kind of soften the blow. Yeah, many of, the, many of our courses in Chesterfield County are dual enrolled with area community colleges, um, not just at the tech center, but in our comprehensive high schools as well. So a lot of students are taking advantage of earning those college credits before they graduate. And even some students were going through an early uh, college academy where they earned an associate's degree even before they've graduated Chesterfield County Public Schools. So Chesterfield is really uh, partnering very closely with the Virginia Community College system to op you know, offer those opportunities for students. That's really, really awesome and great question there. Well, I wanted to say thank you very much to Catherine and Matthew and Mike for having everybody here today. I'm glad that we were able to provide a platform. You know, it is important what you guys are doing in, in the schools. And, uh, you know, it certainly mirrors a lot of what we've been doing with the CHAMPS programs and you guys are taking it to a whole new level. So thanks again for sharing this information. So. Moving along with the agenda, if anybody does want to reach out to Matthew or Karen, please feel free to reach out to me directly, or you guys can throw your emails in the chat right now, and that way that, that conversation continue. Um, Kimberly, I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about the next job shadowing opportunity with J.A. Yes, thank you so much, Justin. Um, I know that Y'all have other things to do, so I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, our next one that's coming up aligns really closely, and I know I've talked to some of you about it already, um, but on March 24th at 11 a.m., we have a virtual GA job shadow with folks from Design Electric, which is an electrical company. Um, I'm not supposed to have favorites. I definitely don't, but this one is really exciting. Um, as you could probably tell from my career path with uh, writing and English, I'm definitely err on the side of humanities. But when I tell you that our practice presentation with them almost convinced me to become an electrician, <laughs> I am not kidding. Um, they really did a great job. One of the people that's presenting is a former um, high school teacher and high school principal. And so he's got a great presentation um, about the ways that the electrical trade can um, help you travel. He has uh, this presentation about all the places he's been, um, how the electrical field has taken him, you know, 300 feet off the ground on wind turbines, how he's doing, you know, solar panels, um, how he's been working on renewable energy. Um, so a really, really, I think, cool opportunity. I'm excited to learn more at this presentation too. Um, so that will be uh, March 24th at 11 a.m. And if teachers and students are not able to attend that, they also have, um, we've been recording them and we put them up on our website. So we already have on our website, the recording of uh, our job shadow with the Richmond Flying Squirrels, and then our job shadow with Horrigan Construction, which is a local construction firm um, in Central Virginia. So we'd love to push that out to as many teachers, especially those tech teachers as possible. Um, and we'd love to get them on board. So I'll put my email in the chat too. I can send you that link to have teachers sign up. Um, Karen and Matt have been great with, with helping us have teachers get access um, and help students get access to those links too. Um, so I'll put my email in the chat and hope to see uh, some of the Chesterfield teachers there. Thank you, Kim. Yes, Kim, thank you so much. And again, thank you for your close partnership. Uh, all these programs that we do with career success and job shadowing, they really would not have a place without JA's contribution and I know, Kim, you just picked up some materials, so go ahead and hold on to those career success materials for us, and we'll get them from you as we start to figure out our next virtual training and recruiting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop here because it is 930. One last thing, we are getting ready. Kim and I should be hearing from Patrick soon on doing a video production to support uh, our programs and missions with CCPS between the Chesterfield Chamber and Champs. So, We'll keep everybody posted on that. We will need a couple of our uh, volunteers to be involved just because of all the different dynamics and um, different aspects we're going to have in this video. But 
again, we're working on school schools for fall of 2021. I imagine these will be the schools that we've worked with in the past in the recent uh, nine weeks, but I will confirm with everybody once we get kind of a feedback from Ann on how school is going to take plus next fall and then also when we can coordinate with which schools are ready for us to be working with them either virtually, which I imagine will be the case moving into the first nine weeks at least. So our next meeting is going to be April 21st at 830. It's a reoccurring meeting, Danielle. The link that, if I'm, tell me if I'm mistaken, but the link that we use today is the same link we will use moving forward and continue to use. That's correct. So, and again, thank you guys for all being here today. Um, we're very excited about uh, what CECs are doing in Chesterfield County Schools. And, you know, Mike, if you had anything else to add here uh, before we sign off, again, thanks for having everybody here today. And um, if, again, if you guys have questions, I saw their emails go into there, feel free to reach out to them or reach out to me directly and we can connect those uh, dots, no problem. Justin, I just want to say thank you very much to you, 